Are these angels worse than the devil? We received an email asking us, Are the angels spoken of in Jude 1, 6 and 2 Peter 2, 4 worse than the devil? We will endeavor to answer this question. Jude 1, 6 And I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of the authority God gave them, but left the place where they belonged. God has kept them securely chained in prisons of darkness, waiting for the great day of judgment. 2 Peter 2, 4 For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reversed unto judgment. The Bible talks of angels who did not stay in their rightful position of their authority. They left their dwelling place and operated outside of the scope of their authority. The Bible states that these angels are currently held in a place called Tartarus. Tartarus is the place of punishment in Greek mythology. The name was originally used for the deepest region of the world, the lower of the two parts of the underworld, where the gods locked up their enemies. It gradually came to mean the entire underworld. We, as Christians, do not believe in Greek mythology. However, it is important to note that the Greek word Tartarus appears only once in the entire New Testament, and that is in 2 Peter 2, 4, which I have just read to you. The Bible talks of angels who did not stay in the rightful position of their authority. Therefore, God put them into chains of darkness, waiting for the great day of judgment. But are these angels worse than the devil? We all know who Satan is, and we know what sin he committed for him to be cast out of heaven. Isaiah 14, 12 through to 17. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? Now, the Bible tells us clearly that Satan is not currently locked up in hell, but he currently wanders the earth. 1 Peter 5, 8 Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Job 1, 7 And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, from going to and fro in the earth, and walking up and down it. It is a biblical fact that Satan is not locked up in hell right now. Hollywood movies attempt to portray a picture of the devil in hell, with a pitchfork torturing people. But the Bible clearly tells us that he is the God of this world, and that he is playing a vital part on this earth. Why then is the devil allowed to roam the earth, yet these other angels are locked up? Most Bible scholars believe these angels are the ones that were mentioned in Genesis who went after the daughters of men and created Nephilim. Genesis 6, 4 There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children with them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Although the fallen angels were not directly referred to as angels here, the majority of Bible scholars believe the sons of God in this context refers to angels and daughters of men refers to human women. This viewpoint sees the Nephilim as the superhuman offsprings of angels and humans. They are the products of intermarrying between mortals and immortals. They are a hybrid creation which God did not create. This viewpoint is what most Bible scholars agree with. They argue that the phrase sons of God 
clearly refers to angelic creatures when it is used the three other times in the Old Testament. Job 1, 6 Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Job 2, 1 Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Job 38, 7 When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Nephilim literally means fallen ones, and we will not be mistaken if we say that they bear their father's names, which are the fallen angels. The belief adopts the idea that Nephilim arose from the attempt of the devil to corrupt the entire human race, making everyone unfit for any godly use. In other words, Satan attempted to put something like a genetic virus to make the human race unfit for bringing forth the seed of the woman, the Messiah, promised in Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. This viewpoint believes that this caused God to send the flood, to destroy all of humanity, except for Noah and his family. Therefore, with this new view, we have a material distinction between supernatural beings, the sons of God, and human beings, the daughters of men. This viewpoint would explain why the offspring of the sons of God and the daughters of men were giants. Supporters of this new highlight that it is important to note that in Jude 1.6, the Bible reveals to us that there are angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own habitation. And then Jude 1.7 goes on to tell us they sinned in a similar manner to the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah, who gave themselves over to sexual immorality and going after strange flesh. In other words, there was an unnatural sexual union. Proponents of this view argue that these could be the angels which are referred to as the sons of God in Genesis. Jude 1, 6 and 7 And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting change for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. What most Bible scholars and commentators argue is that the action of the angels to take the daughters of men as wives was a very grievous and abominable thing before the Lord. We can justify that the account based on which God sent the devil and his angels from heaven was not the same that led to the imprisonment of the fallen angels. If it was based on the rebellion in heaven that God put angels in eternal chains of darkness, then the devil himself wouldn't have been excluded. So God put the fallen angels in prison of darkness because they did not stay within the limit of their proper authority. Angels are not designed by God to experience marriage. Therefore, they went out of the limit of authority God gave them by having unnatural relations with the daughters of men. Although the Bible does not clearly specify exactly what these angels did in 2 Peter 2.4 and Jude 1.6, the explanation I have given is plausible, and the majority of Bible scholars agree that the reason why these angels are in chains of darkness is because of the sin they committed in Genesis. I am unable to unpack all of the different viewpoints held regarding this topic, but what I do want to remind you is that this is not a topic you should spend your whole life focusing on or debating over. Who the sons of God are, are the Nephilim going to return, and so on. The Bible instructs in Titus 3.9, But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. The Apostle characterizes them as foolish, because they were of an utterly unpractical nature, and consumed time and powers which were needed for other and better things. 
Focus on things that truly matter. Your relationship with the Lord. Focus on your prayer life. Remember the Bible was not written to answer your questions. One day when I meet God, I have a list of questions that I am going to ask him. The Bible was written to direct you to the Lord. It was written to order your steps in this life all the way through to eternity, not to answer every one of your questions.